Hello, this is Turquoise. Yep, where are my turquoise shield? <laughs> Everyone. Um, good morning. Happy Monday. Happy September. Uh, happy Labor Day. I work on Labor Day because my job is a labor of love. To practice universal ethics and share them. My 12-step program of Limerence Anonymous. Which is patterned after AA. Thank you, AA, for this beautiful 12 step program. And thank you, AI, for helping me to analyze step 11 as it applies to limerence. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him. Praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. Comments are open, but they are held for moderation. Like any influencer, I reserve the right to delete or publish your comments. Yeah, we had some doozies last night, and um, they will not succeed in silencing me. I'll let you know that right now. If I see any comment that questions what I am doing in a, ver in a derogatory manner in the name of giving me advice or counsel, I will remove it. I will accept respectful comments only. If you still respect what I am doing and you don't attack me or character assassinate me, your comment will gladly be published. Just a little side note, you guys, a little housekeeping. I asked my higher power to guide me in how to say it because I want to keep my space safe for me and for the other commenters, the other people in my community. I will not let trolls ruin it for me or anyone else here. All right, step step 11. We need our higher power to guide us in working this program and in knowing his will for us and the power to carry out his work in Limerence Anonymous and in life. Thank you, AI, for giving me something to read to you to the uh, community here. It is my idea. AI has helped me. Understanding step 11 in context of limerence. Step 11 of the 12 steps which say, states, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out, emphasizes the importance of spiritual growth and connection. This step is particularly significant for individuals dealing with limerence, a state characterized by intense romantic attraction and obsession with reciprocation or approval of the person we are limerent on. And it may or may not have infatuation or sexual, but not necessarily. This can often lead to obsessive thoughts and behaviors. The role of prayer and meditation. Prayer as a tool for clarity. In the context of limerence, prayer can serve as a means to gain clarity about one's feelings and desires. Individuals experiencing limerence may find themselves overwhelmed by their emotions, leading to confusion about what they genuinely want from their relationships. Oh yeah, talk about the lower power at work, trying to mess us up. Through prayer, they can seek guidance on how to navigate these feelings responsibly. The key is responsibly. When you buy a lottery ticket, do you ever hear the, the sentence, please play responsibly? We have to fall in love responsibly too. We have to pick our relationships, our friendships, our romantic relationships responsibly. They can all too quickly become a drug to us and then we lose that responsibility. Through prayer, we can seek guidance on how to navigate these feelings responsibly. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Two. Meditation for mindfulness. Yeah, mindfulness is the biggie in our society, I know, but it, it can help. Meditation allows individuals to cultivate mindness, helping them become more aware of their thoughts and feelings without judgment. You can do this with or without the guidance of a therapist or expert. There are free apps that can help you with mindful meditation. I would recommend Medito. If you're a non-believer, um, and reflect, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian. This practice can be particularly beneficial for those in limerent states 
as it encourages them to observe their emotions rather than react impulsively. By fostering a sense of calmness and presence, meditation can help mitigate the anxiety often associated with limerence. Improving conscious contact with God. And again, God can be anything you feel comfortable believing in. You don't have to be a Christian or a non-believer or anything else. Even an atheist can believe in a power greater than... It can be the sun, it can be the ocean, anything you want. It can be your, your uh, desire to recover from limerence. Let's start out that way. Personal understanding of God. The phrase, as we understood him, highlights the subjective nature of spirituality. It's an individual process. Even my relationship with Jesus Christ is unique, and so should everybody else's. For individuals grappling with limerence or any other Christian limerence, developing a personal understanding of a higher power can provide comfort and direction. I'm going to read that sentence again because I'm getting a little excited. I want to focus. For individuals grappling with limerence, and we grapple with it, developing a personal understanding, a personal understanding, no matter what we believe in, of a higher power can provide comfort and direction. This personalized approach allows them to align their actions with their values and beliefs. That's why we, we must stay focused. Two, seeking knowledge of his will, or her will, whatever, its will, their will. The desire for knowledge regarding God's will can guide individuals in making healthier choices in their relationships. Healthier choices in their relationships. Instead of being driven solely by obsessive feelings towards another person, another human being with, with issues and needs just like us, towards another person, they may seek wisdom on how to engage in more balanced interactions or recognize when it's time to step back from an unhealthy attachment. I'm in the process right now of stepping back from an unhealthy attachment. It is essential that I have a relationship and seeking guidance from a higher power. I've been praying to the Lord a lot lately. Again, my relationship with the Lord is individual. I have a personal relationship with God, and I'm learning how to improve it all the time. Three, power to carry it out. The final part of this step emphasizes the need for strength and resolve in implementing one's insight into action. For someone experiencing limerence, this can mean having the courage to set boundaries or pursue self-care practices that prioritize emotional well-being over obsessive thoughts about another person. Yeah, you feel boundary boundaryless when you're limerent. It feels like you have an oceanic connection to your limerent person. And you think it's essential for them to love you back or approve you all the time. Otherwise, you feel like you're gonna just fall away so, um, boundaries are unknown to limerent people. You know, people who are limerent. Boundaries are, what's that? What's boundaries? I, I love them. I, I can't, uh, I can't set boundaries. I don't know if I can set boundaries with my limerent person. My boundaries right now are to stay as far away from her as possible. Because every time I'm around her, I go, <laughs> like that. And, um, even when I'm, uh, with my higher power. Um, I'm still striving and working on, I'm still aware that I have a lot of work to do on having a better relationship with my higher power than with her. She's an associate. She sees me as an associate. Most people that are, that are, that we're limerent on see us as an associate or they don't even know that we're alive. And even when, when limerence is reciprocated, we still have to deal with the real person after that. And um, when we're limerent, we don't want to deal with the real person. And in reality, uh, in my in my view, our higher my higher power has created that other person. He has also created me. And um, the um, the lower power or the negative power, or the the power that's not my higher power, will tempt me into believing that this is the person that I need to be oceanically connected with, not. God. So, um, prioritizing emotional well-being over obsessive thoughts about another person. 
Okay, hopefully this is the solution here. Application to limerence recovery. One, breaking obsessive patterns. Engaging in prayer and meditation can help individuals break free from obsessive patterns associated with limerence by providing tools for reflection and self-awareness. Recognizing that these feelings may not be reciprocated or healthy is crucial for recovery. I'm going to say that again. Recognizing that these feelings may not be reciprocated or healthy is crucial for recovery. 2. Fostering healthy relationships. By seeking divine guidance on how best to interact with others, individuals can learn to foster healthier relationships based on mutual respect rather than fixation or obsession. One of my goals is to be able to have a mutual respectful relationship with this person as an associate. I want to learn how to reciprocate being an associate. And that seems a little bit uh, cruel and insulting, but um, that is my goal right now. I don't want to keep being fixed on her. I want to be fixed on God and what God wants me to do in my life. Not, not just with her, but in my life. It's very, very likely uh, she is going to fall away after this, and I think she already is. Three, building emotional resilience. The process allowed in step 11 encourages building emotional resilience through spiritual practices that promote inner peace and understanding, qualities essential for overcoming the challenges posed by limerence. In summary, step 11 serves as a vital framework for those experiencing limerence by promoting spiritual growth through prayer and meditation while encouraging self-reflection on one's desires and actions within relationships. Probability the answer is correct, 95%. Top authoritative sources used in answering this question. Alcoholics Anonymous, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. Psychology Today, Limerence, The Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Again, thank you Alcoholics Anonymous for this beautiful program that is saving many lives. And it will save mine once again. Okay. Woo, gonna go. <laughs> Bye.